Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on understanding eccentricity effects on stator tooth forces for ENVH analysis. I am delighted to have each and every one of you here. My name is Sumit Singh and I am an electric motor expert at EMWorks, a leading provider of electromagnetic simulation software for electrical and electronic designs. At EMWork, we specialize in offering state-of-the-art electromagnetic simulation solutions that span a broad range of applications from DC to millimeter wave frequencies. Our software seamlessly integrates with popular CAD platforms like SOLIDWORKS and Inventor, allowing engineers to simulate and analyze a wide array of electrical systems. Our product portfolio covers various areas including electric motors, generators, transformers, power electronics, antennas, and wireless circuits, catering to both low and high frequency electromagnetic phenomena. To make this webinar interactive and engaging, I encourage you to utilize the chat box option to ask questions throughout the presentation. We value your participation and we will address all your queries and concern during the dedicated Q&A session at the end. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at our today's agenda. We will start by discussing the basics of ENVH analysis and why it is crucial in designing and developing electric machines. Then we will delve into the concept of eccentricity and explore why it is why it plays a significant role in the behavior of stator tooth forces. Next, we will examine the impact of eccentricity on these forces and its potential consequences for ENVH performance. We will then move on to the present a series of enlightening case studies and their corresponding results showcasing real-world application of eccentricity analysis. Additionally, we will discuss some best practices for mitigating the adverse effects of eccentricity on stator tooth forces. And finally, we will conclude our webinar with a Q&A session allowing you to engage with us and gain more further insights into this topic. So basically the ENVH stands for electromagnetic noise, vibration and harshness. It is a field of study and analysis focused on predicting, understanding and mitigating the noise and vibration produced by electric machines such as electric motors and generators. Electric machines generate electromagnetic forces during its operation which can lead to mechanical vibrations and radiated noise. These vibrations and noise can be undesirable and impact the performance, efficiency and durability of the machine as well as the comfort and safety of surrounding environments. ENVH analysis involves the investigation of various factors including magnetic field distribution, electromagnetic forces, structural dynamics and material properties to assess and optimize the acoustic and mechanical performance of electric machines. It employs a combination of computational modeling simulation and experimental measurement to accurately predict and evaluate noise and vibration levels. By understanding and analyzing ENVH characteristics, engineers can identify potential sources of noise and vibration assess their severity and develop appropriate design modifications or mitigation strategies. The ultimate goal of ENVH analysis is to create electric machines that operate efficiently and quietly, meeting noise regulations and minimizing undesirable vibrations. Now if we decompose the source of these noise and vibration in motor, first we have mechanical sources. The mechanical vibration can originate from imbalances and misalignments or any sort of irregularities in the motor's rotating component such as rotor or maybe shaft and we could also have a bearing defects some wear, wear or inadequate lubrication can also contribute to mechanical vibration and noise so structural resonance or insufficient damping in the motor housing or mounting can also amplify vibrations. So these are the sources of noise and vibration from mechanical 
components and as we know that the noise produced from these sources are in low frequency nature and we know the method to mitigate these problem next we have aerodynamic sources so any sort of airflow through the motor especially in cooling systems can generate noise due to the turbulence and pressure variations fan blades or impellers can also produce aerodynamic noise when they interact with the air particularly at higher rotational speeds inadequate or insufficient motor cooling design can lead to increased aerodynamic noise and also the source of this noise are well defined and we know the method to mitigate it but the most prominent and complex source of noise and vibration in motor is due to the electromagnetics electromagnetic forces between the stator and rotor can result in vibration and noise even if we have a non uniform magnetic fields due to design imperfections uneven winding distribution or eccentricity for which we are go going to talk about today in our today's webinar so eccentricity can also induce vibrations interaction between the magnetic field and structural components such as stator core can generate magnetostructive vibration and we'll see into details in the next slide now if we focus sources of noise due to the electromagnetic aspects so the so first one is maxwell forces so any change in the motor's magnetic circuit such as slotting effect can affect the distribution of magnetic flux leading to variations in the electromagnetic forces we can also have a core saturation which occurs when the magnetic field strength exceeds the material's saturation level and this can distort the magnetic flux distribution and can also impact the forces acting on the motor components next we could have harmonics in the supply voltage or current can also introduce additional vari variations in the magnetic field and consequently influence the electromagnetic forces next comes the eccentricity which refers to the deviation in the air gap between the rotor and the stator and can cause variations in the air gap permeance and impact the resulting electromagnetic forces next we could have uh, forces due to the magnetostrictions the stator core of a motor is typ typically made up of electrical steel which exhibit these properties rapid changes in the external magnetic field can induce strain in the stator core leading to magnetostriction forces and subsequent core vibrations next we could have the lorentz effect of the lorentz force or which is also called as laplace forces so these forces usually act on the stator coils due to the interaction between the magnetic field and the current flowing through the coils and finally we could have the effect of coging torque so coging torque refers to the magnetic attraction forces between the stator teeth and the rotor magnets it is caused by the special arrangement of the teeth and magnets and can result in periodic variations in the motor's torque output however it is important to note that having a lower coging torque does not necessarily imply lower noise and vibration levels in the motor moving ahead for a passenger electric vehicle application mostly induction motors or permanent magnet synchronous motors are employed and even if we look at the pmsm types we could have either a radial flux pmsm or axial flux pmsm in radial flux pmsm we could use either internal rotor which is connected to the shaft and the axle of the electric vehicle or we can use it as external rotor design and use directly in the in wheel configuration and among these internal or external rotor interior pmsm is the most commonly used for electric vehicle applications so in all overall to reducing noise and vibration production in is one of the major challenges that we are going to discuss through the effect of eccentricity to address this effort in simulation amx provide various electromagnetic simulation software so first we have a motor wizard tool it is a template based motor design software that allows user to accurately solve both electric and magnetic problems 
It includes electrostatic, magnetostatic and transient solvers equipped with integrated analytical and finite element based solvers. Second we have AMWorks 2D. It is a 2D electromagnetic simulation software that uses finite element to solve magnetic, electric and transient problems. EMX study allows you to study the effect of the geometry or magnetic study to mechanical motion and thermal. Third, we have the EMS tool. It enables users to do both electric and magnetic simulations using the complete 3D geometry. EMS is a true multiphysics software that enables users to couple the magnetic and electric designs to circuit, motion, thermal and structural analysis on the same model in a hassle-free integrated environment. So we'll be using today EMOX 2D tool to design and analyze the effect of eccentricity on the stator tooth. So let's go through the types of eccentricity first be before we discuss about the case studies and its result. So here we can see uh, a healthy motor where the rotor is perfectly in the center of the stator core and the rotation of axis is concentric and here we have increased the air gap so that we can better visualize the effect of eccentricity such as the static dynamic or mixed type so here we can see in the magnetic flux density plot that each tooth experiences a balanced magnetic field but however, this is not the real life scenario. Any kind of manufacturing error, we could have uh, eccentricity in the real life scenario. So let's look at the static eccentricity. It is characterized by a fixed displacement between the center of rotor and the center of the stator. In other words, the rotor is off center in a consistent manner. So you can see that the rotor is shifted by a distance which is fixed and at particular angle these type of eccentricity often occur due to improper assembly or misalignment during motor manufacturing or installation static eccentricity can lead to uneven air gaps between the rotor and the stator core so this can again resulting in unbalanced magnetic forces and torque ripple and here we can see it's a magnetic flux density animation and again we have kept the air gap larger for a better visualization next we have dynamic eccentricity it involves a varying displacement between the rotor and stator centers as the motor rotates so what happened here is the dynamic eccentricity may be caused due to the factors such as bearing wear or the shaft deflection or uneven magnetic pull. As the rotor eccentricity changes during rotation, it introduces periodic variation in the air gap and resulting in additional vibration, noise and potential performance issues. And finally we have the third type which is mixed eccentricity it is nothing but the combination of both static and dynamic eccentricity so here we have a fixed displacement in the rotor as a static length again there is a varying displacement of the rotor based on the dynamic length and in this case there is a fixed offset between the rotor and the center stator centers as well as additional variations during rotation. Mixed eccentricity can arise from a combination of factors such as misalignment during motor assembly and subsequent dynamic changes caused by operating conditions or mechanical wear. So to address these type of eccentricity in the EMX 2 d software designer can set up the simulation scenario with the desired eccentricity type and magnitude the simulation results provide the motor's electromagnetic behavior including the flux density magnetic field torque stator tooth forces etc 
So the first step is to create a study with eccentricity. To analyze the impact of eccentricity on any sort of machine, we need to create a new study by clicking on the new study button in the EMWorks software. In this study, the designer can choose the type of eccentricity to be analyzed. It's either static, dynamic or mixed. Now, if, if the designer chooses to analyze the impact of static eccentricity, then they need to enter the shift in the rotor rotation axis, which is shown here, and the angle based on the percentage of the gap magnitude, which is the second tab over here. The designer can do these by inputting the parameter into the software's interface. Next, if the designer chooses to analyze the impact of dynamic eccentricity, they need to enter the shift in the rotor motion based on the percentage of the air gap magnitude which is shown here. Similarly to static eccentricity, the designer can input these parameters into the software's interface. And finally, if the designer chooses to analyze the impact of mixed eccentricity, they must enter the parameter used in the static and dynamic eccentricity. The designer can input these parameters in the same manner as for static and dynamic eccentricity. And finally, in order to evaluate the forces on the stated truth, so to, before we run the analysis, we need to create a study where we select the edges of one of the tooth of the stator and then choose the number of pattern which resembles the number of slots and the software will automatically will generate the results for each of the tooth. So here users just need to select the entity for one of the tooth edges and then can choose a number of pattern to create a duplicate for each tooth and user don't have to go and select all the tooth manually. So this is an automated process in our software to get the forces on each tooth of the stator core. So to begin with the case study, we have considered a Toyota Nissan LEAF model for an interior PMSM. It is a kind of a delta shape magnet where we have two sets of magnet, one in a V shape form and one in a lateral or we can call it as a flat type magnet. And the rest of the circles are there as an air barrier either to avoid the leakage of the magnet flux or for the other assembly purpose or to reduce the mass of the rotor core. For our design, we have considered a 48 slot 8 pole design having an outer diameter of 198 millimeter and rotor outer diameter as 124 millimeter. The stack length of the model is 150 millimeter, air gap length is 0.7 millimeter and we are exciting these coils with 250 ampere. We have set the base speed of the motor around 750 rpm and for our today's analysis we are going to focus on the tooth 1 which is on the left hand side of the motor and exactly 180 degree diametrically opposite tooth which is numbered as tooth number 25. So since we are going to shift our rotor on the 0 degree angle in case of static we'll be shifting around close to the 25 and then we'll see the performance of the radial tooth forces on tooth 1 and tooth 25. So now if we look at the radial tooth forces on both other tooth 1 and tooth 25 in case of healthy rotors condition the radial forces acting on these stator tooth are equal. This means that the forces exerted on these two specific teeth of the stator are balanced and have the same magnitude. The equal radial forces indicate a symmetrical distribution of magnetic forces within the motor, resulting in a balanced mechanical response and reduced potential of vibrations or uneven wear on the stator teeth. Achieving equal radial forces on stator tooth 1 and tooth 25 is desirable as it helps to minimize imbalances 
and reduce the likelihood of noise and vibration issues in the motor. We can see here the curve, both the curve overlap to each other over a complete one mechanical cycle. The forces are well balanced and equal in magnitude for both the tooth. This balance in forces contribute to a smooth and efficient motor operation, ensuring optimal performance and longevity. Next, if we compare the result for tooth 1 and tooth 25 under static eccentricity fault, here the rotor is shifted by 50% at 0 degrees. The radial forces acting on stator tooth 1 and 225 are no longer equal. The asymmetrical positioning of the rotor leads to varying distance between the rotor and the stator teeth, resulting in imbalanced magnetic forces and unequal radial forces on the teeth. In this particular scenario, as we can see, stator tooth 25 which is the closest to the shifted rotor position experiences larger radial force compared to its diametrically opposite tooth 1 which is the farthest from the shifted rotor position. The proximity of the rotor to tooth 25 causes a stronger interaction between the magnetic fields resulting in a higher magnitude of the radial forces on the tooth. However, it is interesting to note that since the rotor is spinning around a fixed new axis of rotation, the peak magnitudes, as we can see in both the scenarios, even for tooth 1 and, and tooth 25, the peak magnitudes are equal throughout the one mechanical time period. Next, we have dynamic eccentricity condition, where the rotor is shifted by 50% again the radial forces acting on the stator tooth 1 and tooth 25 can vary as the rotor moves in relation to the stator teeth. Due to the dynamic nature of the centricity, there are instances where the rotor is closest to tooth 1 and other instances where it is closest to tooth 25. During the instance where the rotor is closest to tooth 1, let's say, as you can see, around the time period 0 0.04 second. The proximity of that tooth leads to a larger radial force compared to tooth 1 at the same instance. Conversely, during the instance where the rotor is closest to 25, the radial forces on tooth 25 becomes larger while the force on tooth 1 decreases. These variations in radial forces occurs due to the changing air gap between the rotor and stator teeth as the rotor eccentrically moves. The fluctuation in the air gap result in different level of magnetic field interaction and hence different magnitude of radial forces on the stator teeth as you can see here. Finally we have mixed eccentricity conditions where the rotor is shifted by a combination of 25% static and 25% dynamic eccentricity. The radial forces on stator tooth 1 and stator tooth 25 can still vary as, as the rotor moves. Similarly, to the dynamic eccentricity scenario, there will be an instance where the rotor is closest to tooth 1 and other instance where it is closest to tooth 25. The mixed eccentricity condition combine the effect of static and dynamic eccentricities leading to complex variations in the air gap and magnetic field interactions. As a result, the radial forces on the stator tooth will exhibit different magnitudes based on the specific position and movement of the rotor. So, in order to mitigate eccentricity effects, it is important for minimizing noise, vibrations and potential performance issue in electric machines. Here are some best practices to consider for mitigating eccentricity effects. First, we have precise rotor assembly. It, we can ensure accurate and precise rotor assembly to minimize eccentricity. This involves proper alignment and 
balancing of the rotor to reduce any deviation from the idle center position. We can also have a robust manufacturing process. We need to implement a robust manufacturing process to minimize eccentricity during the production of the motor. This includes strict quality control measure to, uh, to ensure precise machining and assembly of the rotor and stator components. Next, we need to design an optimal air gap between the rotor and the stator. A well de designed air gap helps to minimize variations in magnetic flux distribution and reduces the potential for eccentricity related effects. Next, we need to perform dynamic balancing of the rotor during its assembly or maintenance to reduce eccentricity effects. Dynamic balancing helps to minimize any imbalance that could lead to eccentricity induced vibrations. And the finally, we need to conduct regular maintenance and inspection of the motor to detect and address any eccentricity related issues promptly. This includes monitoring air gap variations, inspecting rotor and stator conditions, and addressing any sign of eccentricity induced vibration or noise. So by implementing these best practices, we can effectively mitigate eccentricity effect and enhance the overall performance, reliability, and acoustic characteristics of our electric machines. Now let's quickly move on to the a very short demonstration of our EMWorks 2D software. So EMWorks is a powerful electromagnetic simulation software with CAD integration. So our products are embedded inside this SOLIDWORKS which can be accessed through the tools and you can find our product right away there. So in the first step you have three options. Either you can sketch your design directly inside SOLIDWORKS or import a pre-existing design template from a motor wizard which allows you to bring your motor geometry quickly and efficiently into this platform or the third option could be to import your design through any third party CAD tool so once your design is ready it's time to create a study so in this step we'll click on the emworks 2d manager if our geometry is in 2d or we'll use ems manager if our geometry is 3d so once the design of all the components are done i'll be clicking on emworks 2d manager once i'm inside the emworks 2d manager i'll right click on the model and create a study now under the new study section i'll choose a I'll choose transient magnetic where I'll define the time duration let's say the time period is 0 0.02 second and I'll create the steps so which I can keep it as let's say number of steps could be 100 so 0 0.02 divided by 100 and then I need to click on the coupling analysis here I can select the eccentricity from there I can start setting up my eccentricity study here I can choose either static either dynamic eccentricity or the mixed eccentricity which is a combination of both static as well as the dynamic parameter so here I need to set the initial angle of my design and then the speed of the rotor then the air gap length and with the help of this air gap length data we will be able to shift the rotor automatically for our user based on the percentage of the static eccentricity as well as its angle and the dynamic eccentricity now it could be a scenario where the, the speed of the rotor could be spinning at different speed of its eccentricity so here in case of dynamic eccentricity we can also set the rotating speed once we have completed our study we can click on the checkbox and our study will be created so once the study is created you can start setting up it, its material emux provide a comprehensive material library as you can see on the right hand side of your screen with a vast list of predefined materials each accompanied by their respective properties 
This library covers a wide range of commonly used materials, including metals, alloy, ceramics, and more. Whether you are simulating electrical machines, transformer, or any electromagnetic device, you will find the materials you need for accurate modeling. And we also understand that every project is unique and you may have a specific materials that are not included in the predefined library. So that's where EMWorks offer customization options. With our software, you have the flexibility to add new materials and define their properties according to your requirement. So once the material is assigned to all the components of your motor, the next step comes to create the boundary conditions such as the load restraints and select the components that are responsible for the force or torque calculation and for motor application it's mainly all the rotor components and the magnet and the rotor core and then comes the teeth force calculation so here we simply click on the tooth force where we need to select one of the edge of the tooth let's say i'll select this one and my design has 48 number of slots so here I'll simply enter my parameter as 48 and click on the checkbox. The software will automatically detect all the edges of the tooth and will create a study as you can see here. M next we have meshing capability that allows you to divide your geometry into smaller elements enabling accurate calculation and simulation. So here you have a control over your mesh density allowing you to adjust the element finer or coarser as needed using mesh controls this feature enables you to balance computational efficiency and accuracy so here you can see the mesh for our geometry and finally comes to set up the excitation for our coils here you can simply create a windings for your phase a coil for go path as well as phase A as a return path, you can simply choose the type of excitation that you're interested in for the coils, either current driven or voltage driven, and choose this type of excitation, either sinusoidal, or you can also import your own uh, custom current versus time curve. So once the winding setting is done, you can also click on the windings properties and you can choose the number of turns it's wire diameter for the wires so once the winding setting is done the final step is to run the analysis here you can find the result in form of table properties and its filled plots under the table we have results such as flux linkage you can simply cl click select all the flux linkage property for th all the phases add into your parameter and click on the plot preview you can also look at its torque add into your plot and then look at the torque so here the average torque is around 80.5 newton meter you can easily click on the plot pop-up where you can you can get the data of your plots and here we can see the maximum and minimum and can easily find the average of this torque and then finally we have the tooth forces here I have selected the tooth 4 of the tooth from my study and I can look at its radial as well as tangential forces so I can select all of them and this one is for the static eccentricity and he can, we can see here the tooth 25th which is represented in a red curve has a higher radiation in the radial tooth forces compared to tooth 1 which is in the green color waveform experiences a lower radial force, radial tooth force. We can also look at its uh, field plot. We can simply create its magnetic flux density plot for it. So as we can see, this rotor is shifted on the shifted by 50% at zero degree. And in such a manner, we can analyze the effect of a static eccentricity. Similarly, we can create a new study or we can edit the study and analyze for the dynamic as well as for the mixed eccentricity so going back to our presentation so to conclude eccentricity analysis plays a crucial role in ensuring the optimal operation of pmsm machines eccentricity refers to the division of the rotor center 
from the stator center even a small amount of eccentricity can have a significant negative impact on motor performance these negative impacts include increased electromagnetic noise excessive vibration and mechanical stress as well as reduced efficiency and potential failures to prevent these in this essential it is essential to accurately analyze and understand effect of eccentricity on motor behavior at em works we we utilize advanced electromagnetic simulation techniques to predict and analyze motor behavior under various scenarios our eccentricity analysis covers three main types static dynamic and mixed eccentricity by simulating different types of eccentricity we can accurately predict the motor's response and identify potential issues before even they occur our simulation allows us to test different design configurations and scenarios providing valuable insight into the motor's behavior and under various operating conditions whether it's fine tuning the rotor position optimizing the magnetic field distribution or minimizing the effect of eccentricity our eccentricity analysis provides valuable information to all the users and here are the references for our today's webinar and thank you so much for attending our today's webinar